So good to have hockey back, man. So good to have the Leafs winning again. And it was never in doubt at all. At all. Mm. There was a little. Not a single bit of doubt. Hi, kids. Victorious puppy. Huh? This team is ruining my life. Why do I want hockey? Stress relief. We can. Oh, and oh, we will. Oh, Let's go. Hey, Chonky, can you catch? Yeah! I love you, boys. Let's do this 82 times. Hey, did you see the Leafs game last night? Yes, I did. And they won. Always important to warm up there, kid. Leafs win. God, I love doing that. Five to three over the Ottawa Senators in their home opener, the first game of the 2019-2020 season. If you're not new, welcome back. If you are new, welcome. This is the 13th season of LFR, that's Leafs Fan Reaction. Oh, that's what it stands for. I make a video after every single Leafs game, and I started during the 2007-08 season. I have seen some stuff, and what I haven't seen, I'm pretty sure, is a Leafs team this good. There were lots of festivities, there was so much going on, the talk of the town. Jason Spezza getting scratched for game one. I thought Brian Burke nailed it on the broadcast. Mike Babcock's got a little bit of the Mike Keenan gene. I, I just think he's got a complete blind spot to what's going on around him. He doesn't care what people think, and his whole tie goes to the veteran thing. Well, there are many examples of that not being the case, and it obviously wasn't with Spezza. Nick Shore was put into the lineup instead of Jason Spezza. You could even go as far as to say Dmitry Timoshov was in the lineup and not Jason Spezza, but when you look at Nick Shore, he only played, it was about eight and a half minutes. No, it wasn't even eight and a half minutes. It was eight minutes and 13 seconds, but he was the second best Leaf in the face off circle and Babcock had him out there late to kill off the game, to seal the win. He played a minute 19 on the penalty kill and all this stuff about, whoa, Spets is going to have to kill penalties if he's going to play on the fourth line. I'm like, why? Why are you going to make him do a thing that he's not good at? Here's why I wouldn't freak out too much. Spets has played over a thousand games in the NHL and it's tough to remember because he hasn't had a dominant season in a long time, but this guy's close to Hall of Fame caliber, which is a take that was ridiculed yesterday, but go and look at the numbers. He was special for quite some time. But Babcock is telling the truth when he says the Leafs are going to rotate for a while. He said that Spezza is going to play on Friday. Maybe you could have had him play in the first game, the home opener, and had Shore play on Friday. Fine, I think that's valid. He already didn't do that. On the broadcast, they showed the press box, and Nick Patan was there, and last I checked, he was on waivers and sent to the Marlies, so obviously he was called up. And if Babcock is actually departing from Ty Goes to the Veteran, uh, I think I'm okay with that. Now, let's talk about the game, shall we? They're introducing all the players, and oh, oh my goodness, they skipped Mitch Marner. Oh my goodness, they skipped Austin Matthews. Oh my goodness, they skipped Morgan Riley. What's going on? Mitch Marner is named assistant captain. Austin Matthews is named assistant captain, although he didn't wear an A in this game, and we'll get to that. Morgan Riley named assistant captain, and then... John Tavares. That's pajama captain to you. John Tavares is a captain of the Toronto Maple Leafs, to be specific, the 25th in the team's history. Perfect choice. If you've listened to the most recent Panago Pizza Steve Dangle podcast, we had a discussion on there about who the assistants or alternates or whatever should be. I was thinking more of a veteran approach. Jake Muzzin should wear an A, maybe even Tyson Berry. Adam Wilde sold me on Marner and Matthews getting A's. There's a lot that goes into being captain, being a representative of the team, the organization, that the face of the franchise in some ways. And recent events have disqualified Matthews from that for the time being. I understand. Understand that. But you also got to talk to the refs. You got to barter. And Matthews very rarely takes penalties. You got to be a leader in the locker room. It's very clear that Matthews is one of them. Mitch Marner is also a young leader on this team. And in a way, this is an apprenticeship. That's what the A stands for. Marner and Matthews, I think, are both good choices to wear an A. And Matthews didn't wear an A in this one. There was the suggestion that maybe Marner wears the A at home and Matthews on the road. Something like that. You can name four guys with letters but you can only dress three. It makes sense. Why isn't Morgan Riley the captain? Well, because there can only be one. And isn't it great 
that there is more than one worthy candidate. I remember a time very early on in making my videos where we were like, hmm, who should be captain? Maybe Ian White or Matt Stajan. On the podcast, we were talking about, man, Mark Messier is really not liked by Canucks fans. Isn't it weird that he was captain for three years and no one really seems to look back with any fondness? To which Adam responded, did you forget that Dion Phaneuf was a thing? And in fairness, I have paid my therapist to help me forget that Dion Phaneuf was a thing. Thank you very much. John Tavares scored 47 goals last season. 88 points. He is a great player. He is a great leader. He has been a captain in the past. He's involved in the community. He just puts his head down and goes to work. He is a more than worthy candidate for captain. We should all be behind it. And damn, it looks good on a jersey. Would Morgan Riley have been a worthy candidate? Sure. I'm not totally sure he wanted it. Some people thought he looked mad when the camera was on him and they were announcing him. I don't think it was that. I just think he's not the guy who wants the camera on him. And then the crowd starts going nuts because they know what's coming and it's going to be John Tavares. Morgan Riley smiles. He knows. He loves it. Just look at this. Imagine if this guy wasn't your captain. Couldn't be me. No. So with a further delay, we've had the pump. We've had the circumstance. We had a guy put a C on his chest. Let's go! First game of the season. One of eight. 82, and then the playoffs. Are you ready? Send score within 30 seconds. Kasperi Kapanen and delayed penalty. Riley and CC were on the ice. What? Brady Kachuk puts it 5 0 on Freddie Anderson and he goes to the crowd. He goes, Let's go. We're about to lose. Now I saw Ottawa Senators fans laughing. Oh, Cody CC was on the ice. Okay, I could see how that would be funny. In terms of the things that went wrong in this game, uh, this goal included, I'm not going to go nuts on anyone. However, this is a recurring thing with this Leafs team. The mental lapses. And that's what that was. I don't think that was, oh, we screwed up the system. Oh, this guy just sucks. He doesn't have the ability. It's just, what are you doing? And if you watch the replay, everybody took a turn being bad. Okay, great. Cool. Okay, so that's where we're starting. Can only go up from here. What a position to be in. And it was a weird first from then on. The Leafs looked like the much better team. They had the puck all the time. Sens take a penalty. Leafs power play looks good. No going. Okay, Leafs have the puck all the time. Sens take another penalty. Leafs power play looks good. Nothing goes in. And so we head to first intermission. The first intermission of the season with the Leafs looking like the better team and losing to the Sens. Which, to be fair, is a step up from last season where the Leafs looked like the worst team and lost to the Sens. For whatever reason, the Sens had that voodoo last year. Second period, I like to think that John Tavares made a rousing speech. It, no, none of us believe that. You can't even picture it, can you? Neither can I. Whatever it was, probably Babcock going, hey boys, can you maybe pull your head out of the back of your pants? It seemed to work. Tyson Barry, who I thought looked fantastic in this game, throws it on. There is chaos in front. Nikita Zaitsev guarding the front of your net. Whose team is that? Couldn't be mine. Puck ends up in the back of the net. Frederick Coche, first goal of the season, just like we all predicted. And it's all tied up. Except, at the time I'm shooting this video, that is still Frederick Gauthier's first of the season. Watching the replay, and I watched it a thousand times before making this video, I don't know if Frederick Gauthier touched the puck. Maybe I'm wrong, but from my eyes, Tyson Berry throws it on, stopped by Craig Anderson, the puck bounces up, goes off of Zaitsev. Zaitsev's in a tough spot because the puck is right there, his stick is on it, but if he slaps it, it's going in. Gauthier, stop me if you've heard this before, sitting on the ice, slaps at it, but what he actually hits, I think, is the shaft of Zaitsev's stick, making Zaitsev throw it into his own net. If they do change the goal, I think I think it would be Tyson Berry's first as a Leaf from Timoshov still. So Timoshov still gets his first career NHL point. Here's a look at it. I don't know how helpful this is. Either way, Goche is the reason that puck went in the net. So maybe that's all that should count. There's an eye in Goche. There's an eye in Berry. There's no eye in team. I don't think either of them care. Leafs tied the game. Thank goodness. Shortly after, Martin Marincin puts it on. Stopped. Rebound. Rasmus Sandin. That kid who didn't get on the ice for the first like 10 minutes of the game. Throws a Dart on the net. Stop! Ilya Mikheyev, another rookie in his first NHL game. Gobbles up the rebound, throws it in front. Trevor Moore, the season vet. Frederick Gauthier had three goals last season. He's already got one. Trevor Moore had two goals last season. He's already got one. The Leafs, as it turns out, have two in this one. They take their first lead of the season 2-1. Until what seems like negative three seconds later, Martin Marincin takes what looked like a nasty slash on the hand, causes him to lose his stick. Now he's behind in the play. Philip Schlappick sends it over to a really, really Scott 
Sabarin, the former Oshawa general, that's what I'm going to call him, the former guy in the AHL who scored less than 10 points last season, scores his first NHL goal. It's like a contest. Gauthier's like, I had three. Moore's like, I had two. Sabarin had none! Him? Him! It had to, really! Okay, it's tied, it's tied. What's the worst that can- Hainsy! Ronald Hainsy! Someone tweeted me, oh, Zaitsev's gonna get the overtime winner! Overtime seems pretty good! They're losing because they're Ron Hainsy! Dude, full credit to the Ottawa Senators. They always play the Leafs like it's Game 7 of the Stanley Cup Final, and thank goodness the Leafs play them first game of the season. It's a wake-up call. Like, even in the first period, the Leafs are out shooting the Sens something like 14 or 15 to 6. Out of the six shots the Sens had, I would say four were scoring chances. Breakaways, leaving guys alone in front. It was awful. Dude, look at the Sens. Look at them. On paper, on the ice, they are not as good as the Toronto Maple Leafs, but if you give them an opportunity, they will take advantage. Now, the goal is under review. Sens fans, if I were you, I'd be furious because I hate this rule. I hate it with a fiery passion. I think it was Bobby Ryan, doesn't matter. If someone was offside, their foot was over the blue line. Their other foot was up and off of the ice. Therefore, it's offside. Yes, that is the rule. That's the rule. By the rule, it's offside. The goal shouldn't count. However, I'd like to argue that that shouldn't be the rule. Maybe it's just easier to tell whether a guy is offside with that rule in place, but really, what is the difference if his foot is on the ice versus not? It was to the Leafs' advantage at this point. I can't believe they needed help to negate a Ron Hainsey goal, but as long as that's the rule and it helps the Leafs, Okay. Many, many times where it does not help the Leafs. I, I don't think the NHL is better for this rule. I just don't. Although I do like that there is a penalty if you get it wrong. I was just scared that it might be my team. And I know the goal didn't count, and I know it's his birthday and stuff, but was anyone else a little concerned with Freddy that that went in? I got a lot of tweets last night like, oh, October Freddy. No, we got rid of October Freddy last year. He's, he's just good Freddy now. September Freddy was great. Can someone please score a goal so I can stop freaking out? Leafs with a partial two-on-one, William Nylander streaking in with his line mate, the guy that he plays with, his center, Austin Matthews. Stick in the way? No problem. Nylander treats it like a Swedish meatball, throws a little sauce on it, Matthews out of the air because that is a thing that the Leafs do and often, let's go baby! His first of the season, he finally ties Scott Sabrin in goal scoring and it is a 3-2 Leafs lead. After that, the Leafs power play gets another opportunity to work, all right! But it's the Sens and you know they're just gonna crawl back if you don't take advantage of it for crying out loud, score a goal and quick. Uh, nine seconds sounds pretty quick. All right, let's see what Mitch Marner is gonna do and oh, no, Mitch, you can't go to, oh my God, oh my God! The spin and hook past Austin Matthews who, uh, the, yeah, the one-timer can stay. It can stay. Not a full blast, but precision beats power. Top corner. Poor Craig Anderson. Austin Matthews is a leaf. I'm so sorry to inform you of that fact, sir. His second of the game it is a 4-2 Leafs lead. Now, let me tell you a little bit about that goal. Um, that was Mitch Marner. $10.893 million cap hit over to Austin Matthews. $11.6 three, four million dollar cap hit. Now, a lot of people feel like that's rather expensive. Perhaps an overpayment. Well, everyone thinks a Ferrari is too expensive until the Ferrari hits the road. And it's okay, I get why we talked about it all summer, it was all there was to talk about, but there's games now, so vroom vroom mother beep! After the second period of play, the Leafs are outscoring the Sens four to two. On the period, they're outscoring them four to one, and on the period, outshot them 17 to three. Methinks that was a minor improvement. Now let's see if they can hold on to it. What I've been saying is that the Leafs just keep having these traumatic defensive performances super early in the season and I feel like it follows them around. When the Marner Matthews Nylander bunch, they were all rookies in their third game of the season against the Winnipeg Jets, they had a 4-0 lead, Leafs lost. 5-4 in overtime, Line had a hat trick. Following season, home opener, second game of the season against the New York Rangers, 5-1 Leafs lead, 5-5 five, five, tied, Leafs end up winning 8-5, but holy crap. Last year, against the Blackhawks, third game of the season, the Leafs are down 2 nothing early, it's okay, they come back, Matthews gives them the lead late, he does this because the lead should be safe, it very was not, Morgan Riley scores the overtime winner, but again, holy crap, that was a calm little 7-6 outing. How about we avoid needing 7 goals to win tonight, thanks. And thankfully, most of the third period, 
Boring. But a little under halfway through the frame, there was a little excitement. Tyson Berry, who, oh my god, is a leaf by the way, spins Drake Batherson out of his jock, goes to the corner where Elia Mikheyev just was, but he decided to sneak over because everyone's looking at just the pirouetting boy wonder. Count the number of white sweaters looking at the kid. Nobody! Tyson Berry through the slot. Scheibel's a Brazil! Ilya Mikheyev! Spoma show Tyson Berry, time of the goal, 9.43. Big stick Mick with a laser for his first career NHL goal. Who doesn't love this guy? Everyone admiring the Tyson Berry pass, and that's because you should. But have a look at this shot. Not quite top Chad, but right inside the post. Yeah, good luck there, Craig. Sucks to be in this division, I know. Three goal lead. They should be able to hold on to that for crying out loud. Wasn't until a little over two minutes left, Bobby Ryan is able to capitalize on the chaos following a Freddie Anderson giveaway. Freddie, listen, he's going to be amazing. I think he's a top 10 goalie in the NHL and probably will be this season. He had a tough birthday. He only allowed three goals, but I'm having trouble scrubbing the Ron Hainsey thing from my brain. But he did come up big a few times when the Leafs slipped up in the first. He ended up closing the door for the rest of the game. Leafs preserve the 5-3 victory in their home opener leading to their perfect 82-0 season, surely. Mikheyev, first NHL goal and first NHL point. Dmitro Timoshov, first NHL point. And Rasmus Sandin, first NHL point. Congrats to all of them. Round of applause. Austin Matthews, 164 goal pace. Who would dare question it? Dyson Berry on pace for 164 assists. Mikheyev on pace for 164 points. Who would question any of it? You know what's so dumb about that? Like, I'm saying that in jest, obviously. Gretzky had over 200 points. Like, more than once. It's, he's, it was crazy. Questions. Nicholas Robertson is a defenseman! Okay, I never called him Nicholas Robertson. Wait, wait a second. Is this actually Nick Blagden of the QMJHL's Armada? Actually? Nick Robertson is a forward, and so is Nick Blagden. That wasn't a question, but it was a good opportunity to remind you. Nick Robertson is a forward shirts are still available on the Peterborough Beats website. Uh, you can buy them. They're $20 and $5 a of that goes towards Autism Ontario because the Peets are hilarious and also amazing. Okay, let's move on to actual questions. What's your favorite kind of soup? Okay, so this comes from uh, Ely Mikheyev uh, after the game. His English is uh, short, but he decided to speak to the media, and one of the things he said about the culture shock and transition moving to Canada is uh, Canada doesn't like soup as much as they do in Russia, I guess. To that I would say, Ilya, it was 30 degrees two days ago. But soup is underrated. I will I'll agree with with you there, my favorite soup is the one that my Nona used to make, and now my wife makes, and oh my god, she nails it. It's Italian wedding soup, and you've probably had it, and it's watery garbage. No, 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 not this. No. The soup is green, maybe not the most appealing looking, but oh, the taste, a chicken stock base with the with the thick Swiss chard. Oh my, my mouth is literally strips of chicken breast and also little pork meatballs or you can do you can do like little chicken meatballs or turkey meatballs I think we did turkey last time and oh it tastes the way all the best Italian food does it tastes like somebody actually cares about you I don't know what my Nona called it we always just called it the green soup the real name of it should just be you are loved grade your stress level when Ron Hayes he sniped a goal to take the lead then your relief I see what you did there level when it was called back Range is Austin Matthews having to score a goal in a season opener to Gardner having the puck in a tied game seven. Xander, we were having such a good time. The bad one. It was it was the bad one, Xander. It was the bad I was in such a good mood. The least one, Xander! Apparently you left your positive attitude outside along with the other half of your name. This isn't a question, but a baby knew about the captaincy before we did. I I and lastly, how does it feel to be starting your 13th year of LFR videos? Did you ever think it would lead to all this? Thousands of videos, podcasts, hosting radio shows, etc. Yeah, man, you're not kidding. Between this channel and the Nike videos I used to do, the Sportsnet videos I do, uh, CBC videos I did back in the day, all the podcast stuff, 
I don't know what the number is, but I've probably made over 3,000 videos, and even that might be underselling it. I never imagined any of this. I never imagined talking into a camera and having anybody care about it. I never imagined being in a commercial with Mark Savard, a guy whose hockey cards I had and still have. I sold one of his for $60 once, and it was more money than I ever had, and I had to get my uncle to sell it for me because I didn't have my own eBay account or credit card. I, I, I just can't imagine, or I, I couldn't have imagined any of it, and I try not to think about it. It's like staring at the night sky. It's pretty, but it freaks me out if I look at it for too long, so I just move on and try to do good work. Hopefully you like it, and whether you've been here for five seconds, five minutes, or five years, some of you 13 years, Thank you very much, and I hope the videos don't suck. That is it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Click like if you like this video. Click subscribe if you really liked it, because we are going to do a video for every single Leafs game. Tell all your friends, and leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought about the Leafs' first game of the season, and what's going to happen next. Thanks so much for watching. Really, really pushing for this this season, guys. I'm trying to raise $50,000 for Easter Seals Ontario. We're off to a good start. We need to keep that pressure on. We need to keep going. Link down below. Donate. Easter Seals Ontario helps kids with physical disabilities. How's that?